If we've talked about numbers so far, variables, exponents, logarithms, real number space, and just started to visualize numbers in the xy plane, when it changed, when some variable was moving, we started to visualize this. Now comes shapes. You can make geometric shapes out of these visualizations. You draw a square, yes, it has all equal sides, a rectangle, it has um, two equal sides, different shapes, quadrilateral, so on and so forth. They are all results of something changing in two dimensions, X and Y. What happens to the circle? What is a circle? You start with a single point and you draw the equal radius around it and you draw a circle, it is still not perfect. A circle is a beautiful imperfect figure which has a circumference of 2 pi r which can never terminate. Pi remember is an indefinite number so 2 pi r can never terminate so every circle that you are seeing is actually an imperfect approximation. Why are you going around the circle and saying that you covered 360 degrees? Where did the number 360 come from? Why not 400? Why not 500? The sun is at the center, the earth is going around the sun, it took roughly 365 days to come back to the same place, olden days they did not have accurate ways to measure, so they approximated it to 360 so they can conveniently divide it by 4 and make it into quadrants and so on and so forth. 360 that's where it started, that is the, ra that is the degrees measured from the sun as the observer of observing the earth, every day it would go 1 degree. What is radiance? Radiance is from the earth itself. Earth is moving around in a circle. If you allowed it to move r distance along the circle, then it would do 2 pi times r to go and come back to the same place because 2 pi r. So that, that r distance that it covers along the circle is the radiance. So radians and degrees are therefore two equivalent ways of rep representing angles. Now comes when you have three angles in a shape, it's triangle. It could be of different combinations, geometric constructions are possible. You take circles, you take a compass scale, you can do wonders with it. But the most fundamental triangle is a Pythagorean triangle which has a 90 degree. So some of the squares of the two sides would become the square of the hypotenuse. This is, can be proved. Uh, the area of a triangle is half into base into height, again can be proved. Divide the rectangle into two, base into height, and that's half of it is the area of the rect of the triangle. Understand why, why, why does a specific formula gets injected very early into you? You should be able to prove most of these. Now you visualize these shapes right now, you got a good understanding of angles and how triangle is formed. Now you're slowly moving to equations that is formed from these visualizations. What equations can be formed? x squared is nothing but a square shape with side of x. So when somebody says, hey, this is x, how will you square it? You should not say, hey, what is the value of x? And this is how you square it. You should say, if, if you want me to square x, I would draw a square of side x and make it a perfect square. Okay, so now if I were to make x, y, how will I show it? I would draw a rectangle of x length and y breadth. So x, y, it's a product. That is how I form areas. So areas or representations of properties of shapes itself come from algebra and visualizing algebra in the two dimensional space. And that's the beauty of where algebra connects to geometry. The next step is you're understanding how these triangles properties are very proportional when there is a right angle involved. Why would the ratio of opposite side by hypotenuse remain the same irrespective of how big you grow the triangle keeping the same theta then that is the sine theta. If you do the same thing with adjacent side by hypotenuse no matter how big or small you make the triangle the ratio remains the same that is cos theta. Why would it remain the same? It's an amazing property. To understand this better, you would draw a unit circle which is x-axis and y-axis. At the center, you will make sure that the circle is rounded with unit radius. You go around the circle, you are covering radians, radians. If you go around the circle and come back to the same place, you are covering 2 pi radians. And when you do that, you measure the opposite side 
by hypotenuse hypotenuse remains 1 so the sine wave is beautifully negotiated when you go around the circle and now comes the concept of polynomials why are polynomials important you are visualizing just not geometric shapes you are trying to think about what happens when the degree of a particular variable is slowly increased how the different shapes are getting formed in the two dimensional space and when does it cut the x axis when does it cut the y axis you are trying to understand if there is a straight line there is a slope involved how do you represent the equation of a line these equations mean everything in the two dimensional space they are just not equations but every time you put a variable and you constrain it to an expression you are giving a lot of meaning to it and the polynomials the coefficients of the polynomials also play a large role in how these shapes turn out to be